Kim from the Squishy Monster TSM on YouTube and today I'm bringing you something that's been highly requested. It's for a Korean fresh cream cake and this is so highly prized because it's not too sweet and it's pillowy layers of cake that's soft, tender and melt in your mouth wrapped with freshly whipped cream instead of with dazzling fruit. This simple syrup merely comprises of equal parts sugar and water and you just want to dissolve it over low heat and I thought it would inject a little bit of freshness with a little bit of lemon peel and you're going to reserve this lemon to use inside the cake as well. Just take some of the stripping off. Let's do a couple pieces. Let's do two, maybe three pieces and you just want to simmer this until the sugar dissolves and if you're using a citrus peel make sure it's an organic citrus fruit or you've scrubbed it really, really clean. Next, I want to assemble my dry ingredients, and that's my cake flour. And to that, I'm going to add in my baking powder and my fine salt. And by double aerating it, you're ensuring that, or double sifting it, you're ensuring that you're going to aerate all of the dry ingredients, and you're going to extract any foreign particles that may be lodged behind. And you're also going to make sure everything gets really nicely combined as well. Next, I want to separate my egg yolks and whites. So on a flat surface you want to crack it and let's do the whites in this bowl. I'm going to actually let my stand mixer whip up my egg whites for me and you can rock your um, and cradle your egg yolks in the shells like that but if you're very very concerned you can also let the whites just run through your fingers that way there's no chance of it puncturing. You want your yolks to go in one bowl and your egg whites to go in another. Remember that cold eggs will separate easier, but when you're about to bake with them, it needs to be room temperature. This will also contribute to a higher fluffier meringue. So when you're fluffing up your egg whites, you want to make sure there's no traces of fat, meaning no egg yolks. For the egg yolks, I want to sprinkle in my sugar and beat it up with my egg yolks. And you want this to be pale and yellow in color. Next, go in my oil my water and then remember that lemon from the simple syrup or the simple syrup we're going to use you want to squeeze that in there and make sure you catch any of the seeds this is a foam cake much like my Japanese cotton cheesecake so we want to whip those egg whites so when they get frothy I'm going to add in my cream of tartar and slowly stream in my sugar but until then I want to beat it with a wire whisk you can also do this by hand it just takes longer when you reach the soft peak stage that means when you lift up your beater it will kind of stand and then kind of softly wilt down. You can begin sprinkling in your sugar just a little bit at a time, about a tablespoon or so at a time while you're whisking. The whites are glossy, stiff, and voluminous. And another indication that they're ready is the tilt test. And nothing comes out. It stays put. And this was one of those magical qualities that really enchanted me about baking when I first started baking when I was little. Here we have our separate stations in the back, my egg whites, my dry ingredients, and my wet ingredients. So I want to combine bowls one and two. And my egg yolk mixture is nice and homogenous and it's thick, really nice and thick. So while you're working on your egg whites, it may have, have developed a bit of a skin, so just go in there and give it a stir. And slowly, in thirds, just as we always do, you want to slowly sprinkle in your dry to your wet. And I like to give it a help out with my spatula and mix just to combine. Now all we have to do is combine bowl number two with our whipped egg whites. So using swift and gentle motions and strokes, you want to start taking some of your egg white mixture and taking it and folding it into your batter. And you don't want to press out all the air, so just be really gentle with it. I've got my batter ready and my oven preheated, and you know when it's ready, when it's kind of got this mousse-like quality, very fluffy and pillowy, and you no longer see any streaks. Everything is nicely uniform, and you want to pour it in evenly into your cake pans and bake it off. I've allowed my cakes to slightly cool. They're still a bit warm, but I just ran a knife around the edges and we can invert and lift this baby up. 
And it should slip right off because we lined the bottom with this parchment and you can just peel that back. Next, I'm just slicing my strawberries and when selecting berries, you want berries that are small, fragrant, and sweet. The big honking ones tend to not be as sweet. For our whipped frosting, we're going to stabilize it and how we're going to do that is dissolve some water into some unflavored gelatin, not cello. And you want to heat this until the gelatin dissolves, just like you would the simple syrup that we did earlier. And then remember and keep in mind that keeping everything cold will help the whipped cream whip up easier and better. So everything is cold, my bowl, my cream, and I'm just gonna whip this until it gets nice and tall and slowly stream in my sugar and my vanilla. Now I can add in my vanilla and my sugar, just a little bit at a time. And my gelatin is actually waiting for me and it's gotta cool completely before we add it. So after I whip it, I'm going to slip it in. Now in goes my stabilizer. And you just whip everything together. You can stuff the center with strawberries, so just kind of lay them in the center. It'll be a nice bright pink contrast in the center and it makes the whole thing nice and fruity and fresh as well. Next, my second layer gets nestled on top, and you want to repeat the same process. You want to dab the top with some of that simple syrup. And then another dollop of that cream. So this can't be bad between that pillowy sponge cake and then this whipped cream topping and fresh berries just smooth over the top. For this type of a cake, I don't find it necessary to do a crumb coat because the whipped cream frosting really doesn't set up in the refrigerator if you let it to cool. So I'm just going to work my way down to the bottom, swish it left and right with my offset spatula, and just continue to do the cake all around. Let the cake pedestal do the work for you. I'm just taking my offset spatula, running it on the side, and smoothing it out. You can go over any blemishes or imperfections later. Right now we're just smoothing it. and dabbing and swiping off the excess. And that's another reason I lined my cake board with foil. It makes for easy cleanup. And just be mindful that this is not buttercream, so the consistency and texture is a little bit more delicate, but as long as you're patient, it will come together. Now all we have to do is decorate. You can decorate with whatever fruits are on sale, or you like, or you have. You can do kiwi, mandarin, mango, whatever your heart's desire is. But strawberries looked really good today, so I'm gonna use those. And I'm just gonna lay them freeform. It doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it's pretty and it's your to your liking, that's all that matters. And I'm just gonna continue arranging my strawberries. This next step is completely optional, but if you want the top to glisten a bit, you can dab with just a little bit of warmed jelly. And there's just this is just some of my homemade strawberry jam that I just pushed through a sieve, and I heated it up with just a little touch of water. You just brush a little bit on there, and a little bit goes a long way. Admittedly, it's a bit top heavy, but when I think of spring, I think of fresh berries. So it may topple over, but more to eat. So I'm going to slice into this baby so we can see what it looks like inside. Make a little cut there. And lift him up. And how pretty is that with the pillowy layers and then that fluffy whipped cream frosting and then strawberry strewn all about. 